I hope it's clear now why I think the answer is yes. It's not a legal duty, of course. We can't force anyone to study logic and argumentation any more than we can force people to vote on election day. But it's plausible to think that we still have some kind of moral duty to vote. The system just doesn't work properly unless enough of us participate. I think the same is true with critical thinking skills. The system just doesn't work properly unless enough of us take up the challenge of staying informed and thinking critically about the issues that matter to us. Now, the distressing thing to me is that despite all this, we don't generally teach critical thinking in the public school system. Even here in the U.S., the home of liberal arts education that stresses general knowledge and thinking skills, only a tiny fraction of students are ever exposed to basic principles of logic and argument analysis beyond the elementary theorem proving you might do in a geometry class. You'll find very little, if any, discussion of the distinction between good and bad arguments in the public school curriculum from kindergarten to 12th grade. It's a bit better in college and university, where you'll actually find dedicated critical thinking courses. But it's still the case that nationally only a fraction of students ever take such courses. And the trends in higher education aren't very positive in this regard. Globally, we're seeing less and less support for the liberal arts and humanities, and more and more support for business, management, and applied science and technology. The trend is toward education with economic impacts in mind, rather than human development in mind. I see this in my own university in the United States, but there's evidence for a global shift in educational philosophy in Europe and India and other parts of the world that is marginalizing the humanities even more than it does in the U.S., I'm worried that these trends may have the unfortunate side effect of actually stifling the development of important critical thinking skills. I think this is bad for business in the long run, but I'm even more worried that it's bad for liberal democracy in the long run. Well, I'll have to end the show on this cheery note. Next episode, I want to talk about the importance of critical thinking for an even more highbrow topic, the search for truth and wisdom. Just a reminder, you can subscribe to the audio version of The Critical Thinker on iTunes. And you can subscribe to the video version by subscribing to my YouTube channel. The username is Philosophy Freak, all one word. Thanks for listening.